Good morning. It's the best time of the day. It's time to learn some chess. Wake up. All right, so today we are following up with yesterday's video. We're going to be discussing Evans Gambit theory. I'm going to discuss the Fisher game that I mentioned yesterday. And then, you know how I mentioned the Fisher game was a blitz in a blitz tournament? He beat Ruben Fine, 2660 GM in the Marshall, 1963. That is the background. Well, he played him five times, five or six times in that tournament, won all the games. So this was the fourth game. And then in the fifth game, Ruben Fine was on tilt and Fisher beat him in 10 moves. So he beat him in 17 moves and then he beat him in 10 moves back to back. You know how it is on chess.com when you fall into a tilt session, you just keep on losing. But we're going to get into the game because yesterday I had like a three minute intro. I'll work on it, but. I'm not sorry about it, but it's probably a little too long. I don't speak a lot, but when I do speak, I speak a lot. Does that make sense? Joko Piano, Bishop C5, B4. Okay, so you give up this pawn for activity, for a tempo, in essence, for central control. They should not take with the knight, because if they take with the knight, yes, it's still an Evans Gambit, but they don't have the luxury of choosing lines. Right, It's when you choose lines that you're able to throw your opponent off. Because opening, subset, tree branch, roots, lines. Less to know for white makes it easier to play if knight takes b5 was played. So we get bishop takes b5, pawn c3, gaining a tempo on the bishop. And here, fine elects to go bishop to a5. Maintaining the pin, knowing that d4 is coming. Does not stop d4 from coming. So we get e takes d4, don't take. That would be illegal. You should lose a chess game if you play an illegal move. Because in a tournament, at least. Like in a tournament, for sure. Uh, but anyways. Castles, getting out of the way of the pin. And here, if they don't take back, you take, you get full central control. A bunch of open lines alongside some nice diagonals. So they should take. Now I'm hyped for the theory. We're going to do the theory at the end because that's just the way I want to order it. I don't know. Chess is a move order thing. So I'm deciding to do the theory at the end. Queen to b3, getting a tempo on the pawn on f7. Also, nice battery you can take back on c3. You're going to get this cluster of pieces aiming at the king side on the queen side. Now there's two theoretical moves. If they go knight h6, that's a blunder. The two theoretical moves are queen f6, and then you'd go bishop to g5. The queen is awkward. It stands awkward on g6, and you have a bunch of vision. It's one of those openings that play itself, so don't worry too much about the theory. Queen e7 is what was played in this game, and you take back with the knight. You always want to take the pawn before moving the bishop, so that when you move the bishop, your rooks are connected. They're more likely to fall into a tactic. In this game, we get knight to f6, and this is a blunder. Not because of e5, even though, even though e5 is good. In some lines, you go e5 when the knight comes to f6. In this game, however, Fisher played knight to d5, the best move. The queen, if it moves to d8, you pin them. If it goes to f8, you ask them, what are you doing? And so they basically have to take your knight in the center of the board, and their knight has to move. Their knight elected to go to e5. It does not want to go backwards. It's not why it came out in the first place. So now we get knight takes e5. Queen takes e5, and bishop to b2. Sometimes bishop b2 is going to be better. you got to have a read or a feel for the position. In this case, it's better because it gains a tempo on the queen, and then we'll aim at g7. The benefit of a3 is they can't castle. But in this position, they go d6. If their queen is not on e7, then they're not pinned. And you've already blown open the e-file. So queen to g5, they defend g7, attack, or pin g2. We get pawn to h4, a brilliant idea either further misplacing the queen, but fine takes the bait. He's saying, I don't buy it. Fisher's like, soon you will buy it. Da, 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 I can't speak. Bishop takes g7. The rook is attacked, so it moves. And now rook to e1, check. This is a brilliancy. He should have taken the rook. It would have been one move longer a game, but instead he elects not to. He's already resigned. He knows, well, emotionally resigned. Not actually resigned. But 
After Queen G3, he does resign. Now he resigns, actually. Said the same thing too many times. Whatever. Queen takes G3. The point this is bad is because Bishop to F6 is checkmate. And if Queen doesn't take Queen, then you take Queen. And if Queen E7, you take, and he can't even take back because that is mate. So a bunch of mates. Now Fine is officially on tilt. He is raging. And now we get game two. So he just lost to the Evans Gambit. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to play a Philidor. I'm not even going to bring out my dark squared bishop. What are you going to do about it? Fisher's like, well, I'm going to claim the center and I'm going to develop normally in castle. And I really don't like this line for black. You're already down in development and now you're blocking in your pieces. So how are you going to catch up in development? Not an easy task. Okay, here black has to take with the pawn. If they take with the knight, the reason this is a blunder is kind of like a beginner's move, queen to h5, and you're going to at least win a pawn, sometimes more if they're not careful. So we do get pawn takes, apparently still theory, and queen to e2. Knight to g5 is possible, just want to show this funny line, because you do threaten checkmate. So against the Philidor, this queen h5 idea, not such a beginner move. But okay, we got queen e2, knight f6, rook d1, pinning the knight to the queen. Queen c7, 2-2 two, two slow. Knight g5, aiming at f7, and castles. Do you see the move that made fine resign? He was so over. He's like, I'm not going to get any sleep tonight, but I'm, I'm just done. I'm leaving. Bishop takes f7, he resigned. He played nine moves this game. A 26-60 played nine moves. That is crazy. I remember in my first chess tournament ever, I did this and I was like, ooh, I want a rook. <laughs> but a bishop and a knight are obviously better than a rook and a pawn in the middle game. Closer it is to an end game, that can switch. But yeah, I also remember, I taught myself chess. I remember reading, I was like, the king can move twice once in the game. So I remember my opponent put me in check and I moved my king over two squares and he called the arbiter over, and then the arbiter's like, you can't do that. I was like, but you can move your king twice during one move of the game. He was like, only if you castle. I was like, castle? And then I really learned all the rules of the game. So, fun fact, if any of you cared. But rook takes f7. The reason he resigned is queen c4, and you can't save the rook. You're just too behind in development. So, yeah. He beat a GM in 27 moves. Two games combined, 17 plus 10. Quick math. Now let's talk about theory. So, Italian, Bishop C5, Evans. This is what we're discussing today. Bishop takes, pawn takes. We already saw Bishop A5. I discussed why not knight takes. Bishop E7 is a horrible move. Very, very big sideline. Just play some chess. Bishop C5, this is the most common, I believe, or tied with Bishop A5. So as always, you go d4. This is what makes it so easy to remember. Not a lot to remember. Pawn takes. Don't take back because you don't want to trade pieces. You want open files for activity. Here there is a line where you go king f1. But, I mean, this only became popularized with computers. There's no reason to make it tricky. Just castle. Make it easy to remember. Now, if they don't take, you take. If they do take, bishop takes f7. Bam. A sacrifice, but it's okay. We win it back. Now, pay attention to where they move their king. If they go king f8, then take the bishop because it comes with check and you'll win a pawn. If they go king e8, go queen h5 to induce a weakness. So either they you gain a tempo because it'll come with check now, or they induce a weakness. Queen takes, and now their rook is going to get squeezed in on h8 because it is misplaced. So it, this is a fun way to play it. You're probably going to win more material that way. Now, if they go bishop to a5, again, same thing. d4 takes castle. Now, if they take, however, you do not have the same thing because their knight on c6 guards the bishop on a5. So that's the one critical thing you need to remember. Queen b3, like in the Fisher game. If queen e7, we saw knight takes c3, knight f6, knight d5. That's what we saw in the game. If knight h6 to guard f7, you take the knight, removing it, you win the pawn on f7. That's not close. If queen f6, bishop to g5, 
kicking out the queen. Then you take the pawn, and if knight f6, here you do go pawn e5. Typical. Their pieces are uncoordinated. They lack development. They can't even castle queenside. So that is a fun one. Now, queen f6, let's, let's say queen e7, knight takes. Uh, let's say they play bishop takes c3, then queen takes c3, aiming at g7. And again, if knight f6, I would go bishop a3, actually. I'd go bishop a3 here. Because, okay, this is what I wanted to show. If pawn is on d6 with their queen is on e7, as we referenced in the beginning, you have this e5 move. And they cannot take. Because at the end of the day, they're not trading queens. They're losing a queen. And that's why you move your knight first before your bishop to connect the rooks. Knight e4, you would just sack. Your queen is on c3, so you guard e1. So, I'm going to stress don't memorize everything in the Evans. It kind of plays itself because there's so many open lines, open files. I hope you guys give it a try. You're going to get into it a lot because it's the Italian. They like to go bishop c5. I hope you enjoyed the video. Fisher was a monster, dismantled his opponent, made him rage as always. Have a great day and thank you guys for watching.